Well, you know what? I don't even know where... Well, I guess I'll start with this thing I picked up at the dollar store. I think it's going to replace my um, uh, 8 by 11 or 8.5 by 11 thing in the jig that I made. Um, I just... I ran out of ones and I would like to maybe get obviously some smaller T and H's and S and T's and all that stuff, but uh, I think that'd be a nice thing and I'll just put, you know, Russian movement or whatever. Um, I don't know if this is a bit of a rant thing or something. It's just, um, or not a rant, a ramble. Um, it's just there's so many things to be, like, um, to incorporate, but it, it's, um, and because it's, there's so much, you know, I just got to wander around, I guess, and I'll just uh, occasionally look at the um, a, a camcorder and uh, see how it goes. Yeah, Leo's out like a light over there. Um, a big thing, of, well, it was nice, uh, was this morning when I was uh, biking off to work and I just realized, and it's been on my mind for a long time, but it just kind of like crystallized or whatever, was, um, I was like, holy smokes, like, I've got to really try to convince a real person uh, based on the last comments that Charles Satora was mentioning uh, regarding Austria-Hungary and chuckling because um, he's like, oh, Italy's just biding their time. And from a central powers perspective, remember, I'm playing both sides. Grand, oh, gosh, this is fun. Um, I have to really try hard to convince a real human being who I know uh, is swaying towards the Entente uh, to not do that and, and at the bare minimum stay neutral but I really would like him to uh, as a central powers player obviously to go that way and I am trust me man I am pulling out all the stops uh, got all kinds of stuff that I've been working on side on the side thing I can't show them right now because uh, it's part of the enticements of trying to get uh, Italy to uh, go, hmm, this actually kind of makes sense um, to go this way. And uh, what I will say this on a side note, because it is, and I, it did piss me off too afterwards. I was like, damn it, I should have. It's one of those things. I'm like, before I rolled, I was like, you should be filming this just in case no one's going to believe you or whatever. I'm like, oh, as if it's even going to um, go that way. I gave. Uh, what you know, you'll see later. The Germans talked to the Austro-Hungarians. This is weeks ago, man. Oh my gosh! And um, they talked to them and said, you know what? Uh, they gave them a twenty percent chance. Uh, I said of the Austrians, based on what's been going on, man. There's a lot. Of, like you remember uh, in the Eastern Front, um, or what I'm now calling the Eastern European, uh, uh, Eastern Europe uh, uh, conflict zone. Things are going pretty darn well for the Austro-Hungarians. Not so much in the Balkan uh, conflict zone because I'm doing that historically uh, right now. Um, so they feel a bit more, a bit more confident, a bit more, you know, that way about saying, you know, if the Germans want to say, hey, you should be giving up this type of, I, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Anyway, this is 20% chance. I rolled an 11. I was like, what? But anyways, I went with it, so I wrote it down, and I've got it written oh, off to the left. I'm not going to show you, because it's just, I'll give you a little sneaky peek. <laughs> it's on that mat, it's on that side of the thing. I put it on there weeks and weeks ago, um, and it's just been sitting there. So, and I'm going to say on another thing, this is very, uh, I'm, yeah, um, like I said, it's a bit of a ramble. One thing, even if I, I'm just a side note, and I'm just um, providing as a host, I so would love to have a proper live chit chat with people, um, like a live stream thing of a jig, um, just about all kinds of things about the war. I'm not talking about this game, uh, just about things. For example, I'm at this moment completely convinced. I just absolutely stunned. Still, I keep saying this uh, that the Germans uh, were able to last as long as they did. Holy f! I understand that uh, you know the Ottomans and so on and so forth. They, uh, took a lot, you know, pressure off and so on and so forth, but cheaper's jumping. Um, Italy is just, in my game anyways, and I think historically, just so, and people are like, ah, oh, Italy didn't make, you know, wasn't that much of a whatever. I'm like, you know what? They did a massive, it, 
Put it this way, I think if the Central Powers had Italy on their side, let's say they decided at the same time, said, no, actually, we're going to go, uh, you know, uh, in May and whatever, we're actually going to go, I think this would have, that's, this is what I mean, I want to have these type of chats. Um, I honestly believe that, uh, I'm not saying they would have won, but I think the Central Powers, uh, <laughs> could have dragged the war on a little bit longer and I that's when I start wondering if even with the United States I mean it I'm not sure if uh, I'm starting this is the other thing here I got to start cluing into yeah it's like okay you've got tons of Americans uh, pouring in uh, later on in the war and th like I said this is you know early stuff like easy bake oven stuff for in my head um, Logistically, this is not World War II, and people have reminded me about this over and over again. Various people, like game designers that have listened to, um, uh, other people t talking about playing it, like Meandering Mike going, you know, wait a minute here, uh, or uh, even Charles the Taurus saying, you know, look at this. Like, he, like what I was saying on a side note, Meandering Mike going, you should be playing other games, just saying, he's suggesting. Um, you know, you should maybe take a look at other periods of time and, and, and so on and so forth. And then I was looking at Wardrobe, uh, plays World War II and he's doing Reluctant Enemies and I'm just like, ooh. And yet again, uh, way back when, uh, when I was introduced to OCS uh, via Ardwolf's Lair, that type of stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, what I'm saying is maybe World War One, and also from what I've been listening to and reading and so on and so forth, uh, Logistically, it doesn't mean just because there's tons of Americans pouring in and so on and so forth uh, at that point in time. It doesn't mean that they could continue supplying or being able to do what I am to say. So just imagine Italy on the side of the Central Powers. Oof. Um, so that's what I'm trying extremely hard. The other thing is I think the naval component, the blockade and whatnot, um, this whole thing, uh, like allowing troops to go through the Suez, a historic, I'm just saying, me personally, if I was going to be designing a game at a certain grand campaign type s scale, uh, I would really, really make sure that the naval component is, um, does it mean it has to have some kind of micro detail uh, mechanisms in place, but it definitely has uh, a spotlight on it. Not all of them, but it's got one hell of a spotlight on it because I think the naval component on a, at a grand uh, campaign level, I don't want to call it strategic or whatever, it's it's massive and it's, yeah, I'm not, yeah, that's it. That's all I got to say about that bit. Uh, and then I seriously want to start getting into, this is pissing me off right now. Uh, I have to figure out how I'm going to do this because historically what I'm getting into, um, Remember all the other conflict zones, and here's the African uh, conflict zone. Oh, on a side note, I have decided to, uh, made sense, uh, the Northern Sea Zone, all of England, Great Britain, uh, or not Great Britain, um, all of the UK there is going to be um, uh, part of the Northern Seas conflict zone. So they're not part of Western Europe. It just makes a lot of sense, especially with the air raids and all that stuff. i got to figure out and blockade and everything. Just, yeah, that, it just, in, yeah, it's, there we go. Uh, I gotta start like, ah, oh, damn it. It's it's not the end right now. Like there's still some stuff going on here. It's not the end of the world for the Germans in Africa, uh, Central Paris. Trust me, I'm not, it's just, I'm not, well, maybe I am. And I'm just in denial and I'm pro whatever. But I've got to start figuring out ways of, is there some way I can manipulate this before January 1st? Uh, to give the Central Powers a bit of an edge? I don't know. Is is there a game out there that is at that scale or whatever where I can start dealing with uh, the issues that was going on with um, um, the, well, it was. There was a, you know, a pseudo, but it was quickly aborted um, uh, rebellion going on in South Africa when war was declared and so on and so forth and and you know uh, eventually the Union of South Africa went towards the German Southwest Africa just starting to learn this uh, but anyways that bit I mean you know and then you got Veto uh, Veto, uh, Veto Lorbeck sorry oh my god it's got so many things going on in my head okay slow down here Veto Lorbeck 
I can't say it, thinking of other things, sorry. Letel Vorbeck, there we go. Um, and then I know that Togo is toast by, by now and the Cameroons has already got some stuff going on. But I'm, I'm just saying, I want to start thinking about that type of stuff. So we've got, I'm trying to swing Charles Latora, AKA Italy, uh, towards the central power side that way. Um, working on a little bit of um, um, multimedia stuff, I guess you want to call it that. Then I have to start thinking about, sorry, I'm zipping on over here. And then I've got, uh, yet again, uh, I've, I've got to start integrating the British hyper, I should say hyper aggressive with their Navy. I think someone there has realized, and it certainly isn't Lord Kitchener, because he's trying to figure out, okay, this is going to take a while, man. Uh, we better start getting ready. Um, this I have to start, uh, which I am, uh, and I'll talk about it later, about how this is getting integrated properly and it's got to do with the, like I said, um, hold on, we'll zip on over, because it's got about to do with uh, the Mediterranean and um, the Emergency Measures Vessel Identification Registry, Enver, over here. So that was that is, yeah, the, the Germans decided to uh, just post that out. And I don't know if that was a smart move or not. I'm sure it pissed the Italians off because um, they got to deal with merchant trade. And now you just said something. I, I, even though I did try to say, okay, everything north of the uh, Tranto, uh, Strait of Otranto, you, you're all right. Oh, Lord, left in, eh? And then, we've, like I said, jeez. Oh, got this, of course. Um that's the, uh, on a side note, starting to look at the grand strategy for each side. What do the Entente want to do? What do the central powers want to do? And then each state, they, they've got their own agendas. And I've got to integrate that bits and start looking at the politics. Hold on, I'm going to turn on another light. And then, like I said, with the non-aggression pact with the Russians, i got to start figuring out the troops uh, going this way. Yeah, I'm liking these little uh, makeshift... Um, uh, bulletin or uh, cardboard bulletin. It's like uh, leftover um, insulation packing from uh, a food delivery thing. Good food I, uh, I use off and on. Um, anyways, yeah, and then I'm going to start doing this and what I'm doing uh, partially for myself while I, and I'm also tr always trying to integrate. I don't want to be overt about this mini game and whatnot when I get into the live stream stuff. I want that to be more towards just general gaming and uh, World War One exploration and all that stuff, and talking about you, you know, with you guys. Um, but here is what I would like to do. I'm doing a thought experiment thing, and I was like, hey, let's try to integrate it with the um, um, uh, the live stream. So what I'm going to do, and I don't, I wanted to do a bit, uh, bits of the France thing, but I'm like, no, I don't have enough time for that. So what I'm going to do is with the war economics is I've taken all the hexes that uh, the Germans have taken over in Belgium and went, okay, we're going to take a look at that and take a look at the war economics. I'm just going to start a little bit on uh, on the live stream. It's not going to be a full comprehensive thing and just keep on trucking from there because you guys are going to help me out. So I'm looking at it. Um, yeah, so, and it's okay. I'm just like, there's so much going on here. And then, okay, one more little bit because they're going back to what I call my place where I find uh, complete calmness, relaxation, whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, yeah, this is where it all started for me. And uh, yeah, it's just very relaxing. Um, I just feel like, um, even though obviously all the grand strategic stuff and all that bigger uh, whatever uh, starts getting kicked in, um, it's just off in the distance. You know, here I, I've got to deal with a little bit more uh, real stuff. It's, you know, certainly not the nitty gritty, but uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of intrigue and a lot of fun stuff. And um, I just, um, well, I guess, I guess I'm more used to it or whatever that way. But uh, it was fun also on a side note when I, uh, like I said, and then I'll shut up. Um, uh, when I was taking a look, I, I went over the fronts there for the second battle of Artois in April 1915, which I'm using for January 1915. Uh, 
I was like, wow, this is going to go nice. I'm going over the hexes in a big thing, and I'll try to do a live, uh, maybe a recording for the live stream and whatnot, and so on and so forth. But alrighty, that's it. I'm trying to also, uh, like I said, because there's just so much going on now um, with this game in general, or whatever heck you want to call it. Um, remember, I've got also this other, all other aspect of the narrative stuff I want to get into, and well, it's partially with the uh, Italy and the Charles of Torres stuff and I want to get into the newspaper thing and oh gosh well it's, this is it this is it just keep on trucking until I drop dead so I am looking at it I'm having a blast and I hope you guys are too with whatever you're doing all right see you later